Hello guys. I'm wearing the same outfit from my skincare favorites video because I just filmed that this morning. But hello, today we are doing a veg vlog and we're doing this old school, which means I'm just filming this with the audio on my camera because the last time I filmed a veg vlog on this channel, I like mic'd up. Basically the last time I did one of these, I just felt like I was doing the absolute most and it made it not easy to film, basically. And I think veg vlogs should be easy to film. If you're not familiar, I mean, the title basically says that this is just like a what I eat in a week. I did these all the time in college. I am a vegetarian, but especially when I was in college, I was more of like an at-home vegan. I'm kind of trying to go back to that. Uh, just eating vegan as much as I possibly can. Just know when you're on this channel, you will not see me eating any meat. None of my recipes have meat. And I am going to start this video off with a grocery haul because, because that's why. Um, and I thought this was a good place to kick off and talk about some fun. You don't need to have them vegan products, but as I am trying to eat vegan more and more, they're just fun. Okay guys, they're just fun. But yeah, so some of these groceries that I'm about to show, you'll see me cook throughout the week. Some of them you won't, but let's just go, you know? Let's just freaking go. So I got a couple of Honeycrisp apples. I got these little peppers. These are, I don't know, just some cute little peppers I saw. I imagine they're not spicy. I feel like you should, oh, it's mini sweet peppers. I feel like I should be able to like dip these into like a little snoss, little snoss and eat them and enjoy them, I'm thinking. I got some fresh cut watermelon and I also picked up, I love olives, so I got some pitted Greek mixed olives. I just realized the autofocus is on and that's probably really annoying. I am so sorry, you probably heard that throughout the whole intro. I got a bunch of, I call this dino kale because that's what Hot for Food calls it, but it's just basically the very like dark leaf kale. This is nice just to like saute up on the side with some garlic and whatever. You can put this with tofu, you could put this with like some little fishless fillets from Gardein, whatever tickles your fancy. I got these little multicolored carrots that I can also enjoy with the peppers, I hope. Dip those into a tasty sauce. Speaking of tasty sauce, I saw, um, you know, Hot For Food has that guy on her channel now. I am blanking on his name, like Sea Snacks something. Really funny dude. He has his own channel where he's like trying out snacks and things all the time. But recently this bitch and sauce, part of my French, sent him a bunch of sauces. He tried them all. I've always seen these in co-ops and I've just never tried it before, but this is just basically like a dairy-free, says the almond dip. Um, it contains almonds and soy, so just be aware of that if you have any allergies. Water, grapeseed oil, lemon juice, nutritional yeast, liquid aminos, garlic, spices, and sea salt. That's it. So I'm gonna try dipping some veg into that and honestly, I'm feeling kind of snacky. We might have a taste test right after this. I also got some salsa. This is the medium homestyle salsa they had in the refrigerator section. And I got some guacamole. This is the green chili guacamole. I've never had it before, but these both sounded good. Um, I have been watching a lot of Sweet Simple Vegan as of late. I had never been subscribed to their channel, but they're great. They do a lot of like taste tests, like what's the best vegan chicken? What's the best mac and cheese? What's the best pizza? And in their chicken video, they talked about this no evil plant meat, no chicken. <laughs> Um, very interesting packaging. Basically like vacuum sealed like that. No idea how I'm gonna use this, but they rated it pretty well in the video. So hopefully I can maybe try to use this in a recipe this week since it's so interesting. Oh, also I forgot to mention I got tortilla chips to go with the salsa and guacamole. And then also in the <laughs> Sweet Simple Vegan's best uh, mac and cheese video, they tried the Amy's vegan rice mac and cheese. So not only is this vegan and dairy free, it's also gluten free. This was very highly rated for an ooey gooey real mac and cheese experience. How exciting is that? So maybe I'll try this for like a lunch this week. I got some of these organic firm tofus that are like not packed in water. I kind of prefer these like little like vacuum sealed, whatever you want to call them ones. I tried these in college and I like literally my freshman year of college, I don't even remember if they're any good, but it's a, again, a naughty little thing, but I like having these noodle soup things, these instant noodle soups on hand for when I'm like 
mad lazy and just really need to eat something. So I got the Japanese style miso soup bowl. These are from Annie Chun's. And then this one is falling apart, but this is the Japanese style udon soup bowl. So yeah, both of these are vegan. Never heard of these, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I went to the grocery store hungry. It was stupid. Um, but I haven't learned my lesson. So anyway, I got too many things, but I saw these, they sounded cool. These are these sprouted seed crackers that have everything seasoning, like an everything bagel uh, from Simple Mills. And these are actually gluten-free and I don't often gravitate towards gluten-free stuff since I don't have like any sort of gluten allergies or anything, but that everything seasoning just caught my eye. I got some maple syrup. I love putting maple syrup in oatmeal for breakfast in the morning. Also, if you can find Oatly's full fat oat milk, your oatmeals will never be the same. Ben and Jerry's, you know, they kill it with the vegan ice creams, Netflix and chilled. If you've not already tried that flavor, that is the rock star vegan flavor. I'm just gonna say it because it's, you know, a lot of vegan ice creams, they are very like icy because obviously there's not like any cream base necessarily in the ice cream itself. Um, so the texture is usually not ever 100% there although it's you know still very delicious, but that Netflix and chilled, when you have the peanut butter in the vegan ice cream, like combined as an ingredient, not just swirled throughout, that's it. Like that's the key to making an amazing vegan ice cream. You could probably just do that at home on your own if you're feeling real wild and free. But yeah, so I highly recommend that flavor. But today I just picked up the chocolate chip cookie dough, a classic. I've never tried the vegan version before, so. We'll see if it's any good. Last couple of things, I just got some seitan. Always great to have on hand. I love seitan. It's actually my favorite sort of like protein of all the like tofus and tempehs. Like your gal doesn't do tempeh. That texture is just not for me. I love tofu for the versatility, but when you really want something like chewy and delicious, seitan is the way to go. And finally, these guys, I saw, I don't remember who, I saw someone, some vegan account post these on Instagram and I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to find those because they found them at Whole Foods and I try not to shop at Whole Foods just since the whole being owned by Amazon thing. But again, no shame. If you want to shop there, do your thing. I don't care. For me personally, I prefer to go to my local co-op. They are avid. Black Lives Matter advocates at my local co-op, so I'm here for it. But anyway, someone posted that Gardein made some canned soups. So we've got this plant-based chicken noodle. Amazing. <laughs> I'm like so excited. I love soup. And then we have the plant-based beef and vegetables. I am so freaking excited to try these, but Anyway, that is my grocery haul. Let's get some of this stuff into the freezer, but then I also wanna do a taste test for you guys right now. Intriguing. Let's dive into the peppers. Let me just try one on their own. Yeah, it's just like eating a bell pepper, which is nice, cause then I don't have to take the time to like cut up a bell pepper just eat these on their own. But to make it even better, oh, I just dipped all those seeds in there. All right, we'll just scoop them out. Whoa, I like, can't really put my finger on the taste, but it's very good with a veggie. It's just a really nice, savory, like creamy, kind of sauce basically. Let me try that just cause I'm big snack mode right now. I mean, we know what carrots taste like, but let's just try it with a carrot, like a yellow carrot. Tastes like a carrot. Mmm. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm starving right now, <laughs> but this is seriously good regardless. It's not trying to be cheesy or anything. It doesn't claim that on the packaging. It's just freaking good is what it is. It's just freaking good. All right, next I'm going to try these everything crackers. Did I leave the autofocus on? I did. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Gluten-free lady, like I said. It's 
It's definitely very crunchy like a gluten-free cracker always is. Tasty, I mean, if you're looking for a good, just like work snack, school snack, whatever. Pretty good, wait a second. Clearly I already have a problem. <laughs> Just kidding. The veggies are actually better in this. But this isn't bad. Oh, totally missed my mail. Hello. And good morning. It's a rainy Monday morning. I am going to show you guys how I make my oatmeal. Oh, my ear is like, my ear needs to pop. I love oatmeal. And for a while there, I was really, really loving mixing it with Greek yogurt, but I just grabbed a vegan yogurt. I'm gonna show you guys some other stuff I throw in to make it delish. So I just use the Bob's Red Mill rolled oats um, and I just follow the single serving option. I'm gonna do it on the stove top. That's just, I find it works better that way now. This is that Oatly full fat milk I was talking about, OMG. I usually actually just make this oatmeal with water, but since you guys are watching, let's just make it extra special today. Um, I usually add some peanut butter at the end for a little protein, some vegan butter. This is the Nancy's probiotic, probiotic, I said that strange, I think, non-dairy yogurt. I wouldn't eat this on its own, but I have tried this mixed into the oatmeal and totally it does the exact same thing that Greek yogurt does. It's just, again, like an extra boost of protein and, you know, some other good gut health things. I had been putting in this super fancy maple syrup. This is a salted caramel infused maple syrup, but this is actually not that sweet. It's like very delicious, but um, I just wanted to get some normal maple syrup instead. So I'm going to take about one cup of milk and we're gonna bring this up to a boil real quick. I also usually toss in just a little salt to taste. And I'm going to add in about a half a cup of oats and immediately knock this down to like low, medium low. And then we're just gonna let that go until quite a bit of the liquid has evaporated. Pretty much there. I don't want it to be completely liquidless. I mean, cook to your heart's desire, but I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna add a little spoon of vegan butter some peanut butter, a decent glob, some of this maple syrup. I leave some of that liquid because it really thickens up with the PB. And you could totally just leave it like this. Let me just taste real quick. Mm-mm. Oh yeah, I missed having that real maple syrup. But just for a little extra, I'm gonna use some of this yogurt. And I'm just doing like, I did like three, like four globs, not very hefty globs. And this is like a small spoon I'm using. This also adds kind of an interesting like tang to your oatmeal. So I love that, but just be aware. I mean, I think most of us kind of know what yogurt tastes like and does to things. So, mm-mm-mm. Yum. All right, sitting down to the email with my oats. Seriously, when I make this with water, it's still delicious, but this straight tastes like there's dairy in it. Okay, hey guys, I just heated up this Mac. So interesting. It honestly smells like a, like a really like almost stinky cheese, which is fascinating for something vegan. It likes legit smells like cheese. So actually I am curious about some of the ingredients on this guy. I mean, it contains vegan cheddar style cheese, which is filtered water, tapioca starch, safflower oil, coconut oil, yeast, pea protein, salt, vegan natural flavors. I'm skipping over some other stuff that doesn't matter. I mean, it's kind of it. At the very end there, you've got some sea salt, nutritional yeast, mustard powder. I don't know, nothing too crazy, nothing too innovative necessarily. Mm. 
well. It like coats your mouth in a gooey way that like mac and cheese usually does. I mean, it's salty, creamy, like a little funky, like I said. You can get that from the smell even, but the taste is like, like a funky cheese. <laughs> like legit, if I ordered this at a restaurant, I would just think it's mac and cheese. It doesn't taste like craft dinner, craft mac and cheese, anything like that, but it tastes like a certain variety of like actual mac and cheese, not like a vegan mac. Hello everybody, it is now 6.21 p.m. and I'm gonna dive into making a stir fry. I also wanna shout out these shorts I'm wearing. I changed out of my jeans so you know work mode is over. I've already posted these on my Instagram but these are from the brand Come Back As A Flower and I just think they are so cute. Like this little dye effect situation. But anyway, okay. This evening I'm going to be using the No Evil Chicken which Looks like this. Um, some of the key ingredients, vital wheat gluten, shoyu, chickpea flour, nutritional yeast, garlic powder, onion powder. So yeah, I mean, we'll dive in and see what's good. I've also got some shiitake mushrooms that I need to use up. Same with this pepper. These have been sitting in the fridge for a sec, so it's time for them to go. Um, grabbed four cloves of garlic. I got these noodles from the refrigerator section at an Asian grocery store. And then we've just got like a plethora of sauce makers. So the key to tonight's sauce, the star of the show, is this Korean barbecue. It says original sauce and it says chicken and pork, but if you read the ingredients, there is like no animal stuff in it at all. So very cool. And I've also got golden mountain sauce, a little black vinegar. Who knows? I don't know if I'm actually going to use up. I just pulled it out of the fridge. I've got like a teensy tiny bit of tamari left. This vegetarian mushroom stir fry sauce. Some of the Trader Joe's umami seasoning and then maybe just a little splash of sesame oil at the end. So yeah, let's get this going. So we've got the cast iron going, ready to brown up the stuff. Eventually I will fill this little saucepan with water, but these noodles only take like eight seconds <laughs> to cook. So we'll pretty much throw those in once this is really starting to wrap up. I'm trying to decide, I think the mushrooms and chicken I'll put in at the same time. Let's start with the chicken thing first, just to see what's good. <laughs> It already smells pretty good, which is more that can more than can be said for when you just dump straight like tofu into a pan, obviously, if you haven't seasoned it. But like I said, with reading the ingredients, this does already have some stuff in it. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these mushrooms. Basically, I'm just gonna brown these before adding in the um, red bell peppers and then eventually the garlic, just because I want the bell peppers to stay somewhat crispy. The instructions basically just said like, give things a stir, leave it for a minute or two without touching it, and then just keep doing that until you get kind of the desired, you know, doneness. I mean, I've definitely got some dark bits in there on the smaller ones, but I don't think that's a bad thing. All right, I started to turn the heat down a bit. I'm thinking we're in a good place. I like just took a nibble. I mean, obviously it doesn't taste like chicken, but I think the texture is pretty good. So I'm just gonna toss these guys in. And now with the heat fairly low, I'm just gonna start crushing my garlic. And now that that's been in for like 30 seconds, I'm gonna add some of this guy. Just cause it needs to like cook down a bit. So I wanna get that going before I add the other things. I'm also gonna use this time to add some of the umami seasoning. And now I'm going to toss in the noodles. And we're gonna need a lot of sauce to get this going. So let's just go. Okay, and with that, I mean, I just dumped in the sauces and 
the umami seasoning a little bit more until it tasted nice and added a little salt, but I think we're done. I actually almost forgot I popped in the sesame oil and I'm wanting a little more heat, so I'm gonna just use these Korean red pepper flakes. Not too much. Okay, apologies because I'm literally sweating, but here is our little stir fry. I'm very intrigued to try that chicken, so let's dive in. Okay. I'm gonna try the chicken on its own first. Got a piece here. Sorry, this lighting is awful. I mean, it's basically the texture of seitan. So if you like that and can find it cheaper, um, it's delish, but I mean, it's nothing I haven't already had, I don't think. I mean, this, this snoss though. <laughs> How many times have I said snoss in this video? Mm. It's kind of creepy seeing the doorway in the back, isn't it? This is great. This isn't really a recipe, but have fun. Experiment with a stir fry. I've made this with broccoli before. Obviously the possibilities are endless. Howdy, howdy. What is up, everybody? It is a weird time. It's 1044, so brunch. Got straight into some things today and didn't end up eating, but exciting. Today we are trying out that Gardein chicken noodle soup. I posted about this on Instagram and y'all have been asking, what's the scoop? So here it is. You just heat it up in the microwave. Um, it suggests doing it covered, which I can co-sign because it was popping and doing a lot. There was a lot of action going on inside the microwave. Um, but yeah, let me come in close just to show you real quick. So yeah, bit of a messy bowl, but I mean, we've got our faux little chicken, you know, apostrophe N chicken. <laughs> gotta make that perfect bite. Gotta get a noodle, a little chicken thing, carrot, a little celery. Wow. That does kind of take me back in a way to like I mean, it's better than a Campbell's chicken noodle soup, but that kind of progress, what's the one, progresso, progressive? Mm. Per anyway, that one and Campbell's, um, the chicken in it almost gets just like, I mean, this is kind of gross, but like a spongy sort of texture from hanging out in the broth for so long, which I certainly feel like this mimics. Let me see again some of the ingredients. I mean, my mind immediately was drawn to vital wheat gluten, so I'm sure that's what's going on with those little chicken pieces, but otherwise soy protein isolate. I don't know. I won't get too in the weeds of all that, but this is very comforting, guys. You know what time it is, except actually I am still working on work, but... Oh, and by the way, it's 5.39 p.m. Um, I'm gonna be working for a while on this little project that I'm doing and I just wanted to be comfy and on the couch and just being a bad adult in terms of my <laughs> dinner. Um, I'm gonna have some of this ice cream right now. This is the cookie dough one I talked about, the vegan one. Aside from the soup I had for brunch, I mean, I did finish the chips and salsa and guac today. This is like perfectly smooth. That's never seen it so smooth like that. But yeah, aside from that, I mean, it's just been a bit of a snacky day. So nothing really to report, but I did want to try this on camera. This one is made with almond milk. It's good. I mean, not really too much to report. Mmm, I don't know. I would put this up there on the list with Netflix and chill. All right, good evening, everyone. Not seen you at all today. It is 8, 11 p.m. Just got done working. Anyway, um, so yes, I uh, have been eating throughout the day. Obviously I had like some more leftovers and some other odds and ends. I need comfort. I need soup yet again. Also, I'm wearing some overalls that I designed for Target. Oh, did you just hear my thigh bone <laughs> crack? Okay. So I'm gonna do the little Japanese style udon soup from Annie Chun's. All right, hello everyone. The camera is facing this way because my apartment's a big mess after today, so I just don't want to show it. I mean, you can even still see some of the residual mess here, but here's the soup. 
I mean, nothing too crazy. I did add a little salt and a little bit of the Trader Joe's umami seasoning just because, I mean, I add that to so many things. Yep, this is gonna spill. I do like the bits of dehydrated mushroom in it. Mm. I would definitely say that's good as long as you add salt to it. You could add a little something else if you want to. Oh, hello there and happy Friday. This morning I ran to Target for whatever, it doesn't matter, but of course, when you go to Target, you buy some stuff you don't need. And since I passed through some food items, I figured I would just show you real quick. I grabbed some snap peas because these are just a great snack. I'm gonna try this right now. This is from Good Foods Plant-Based Queso. I still have a few chips left, so I thought I would give this a try. And you guys probably think I eat nothing but instant meals, but the fact of the matter is, sometimes I really like to cook, sometimes I'm super lazy, and they have this bulgogi which i've never had a vegan i've never had bulgogi even like before i was a vegetarian and um sweet earth makes the best breakfast burrito i think it's the big sir one it's the one that has potatoes and tofu in it saw this so I'm not sure when i'm gonna make this honestly maybe for breakfast which i know is kind of weird but Oops, straight just catapulted my phone out of my pocket. Um, yeah, let's get this going and then I'm gonna try the queso. Okay, so this looks like it's mostly cooked brown rice, awesome grounds, which are pea protein, some oil, pea flour, barley, and then obviously we've got a bunch of good looking veg, a lot of carrots and cabbage and stuff. But, and then the queso is cauliflower, red bell peppers, almonds, water, almond butter, that's interesting apple cider vinegar, onion, lemon, garlic, salt, nutritional yeast, all that kind of stuff. You know, I always gotta try from the lid first. Or the seal, whatever. Mmm. Mmm. I feel like the texture is not the best. It's kind of... It's kind of gritty. <laughs> I mean, once it's on something crunchy like a, tip, a chip, you can't really tell. Let me get more on. Let's get this straight. This doesn't taste like queso or cheese, whatever, but it do be kind of good. And if you had like this with guac and with salsa, a little refried bean, I don't know. It tastes better the more I let it marinate in my mouth. <laughs> Okay, so it certainly doesn't look like the packaging because you have to stir everything and it already comes very like combined as opposed to this, obviously. It's only 430 calories, so you might want to pair it with something else. But let's see how it is before I add any like salt or umami seasoning or anything. Mm. Mm. I don't think it needs salt or anything. Oh. Gosh, I keep making a mess. I mean, there's gochujang in here. Tamari, it's pretty good. I think it's well seasoned actually. Well, okay, I'm gonna work on some stuff for a bit and then I will see you guys later. Hello. I never ended up making anything else, so I never got a chance to say goodbye. Um, apologies that this was like a super snacky episode, but honestly, I was really, really busy the week I filmed this and I'm hoping that I can show you guys some healthier, more like, whole foods sort of options um, the next time I do a veg vlog, which I'm hoping is soon. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.